I'm going to give you a, a quick walkthrough of this uh, deep learning project I worked on. It's a image classifier project. To be more specific, it is a dot breed classifier. So basically, what this model does is that, given a image, it should be able image of the dog, it should be able to uh, tell you with certain confidence what breed the dog is. So a little exploration of the dataset I used to train this model. Um, it's a Stanford Docs dataset. It's, it's publicly available online. It has um, contains 120 breed, different breeds. Uh, the total image for the, the dataset is 20,580s. Um, just a little quick overview of some of the pictures in each breed of the dog. You can see these are all going to be used to train my model. So here, um, start of the project I extensively used TensorFlow and, and, uh, and Python and NumPy in this project and here this script I wrote over here is to download and the uh, um, and unpack all the uh, the data to the local storage on Google Colab so if you run this script on your own you are able to you will be able to rep reproduce everything in your local environment for all the outcomes I, I, I generated. Here is the script I wrote. Um, uh, I borrowed from 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 some guy, and he uh, I used this method to extract um, the 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 label information, aka the the, the breed of the particular um, of that particular dog in the picture, and I display some of the the, the photos here to make sure we downloaded everything correctly. And moving on, loading the data here. In order to train the data, um, so when train the when train during tra training of the data, um, the x the x axis um, well the x axis is gonna be um the image. The y is gonna be uh um the, the breed of the dog. So I load everything in the form of the the the, the address of the picture. Uh, that's gonna be our axis, and the corresponding y is gonna be that particular uh, breed for that particular image. And here it's just to kind of I like to print everything out, make sure before the training starts, I know I loaded everything correctly. Um, pay attention to these. These are not images yet. They're they are the address of the image and uh, just to make sure that works out right I print out I wrote this code to print out the the uh, display a few images in the training data set and here the data generator I, I built because um, this is pretty commonly um, practiced in machine learning we don't um, we are deal dealing with large amount of data. We we use data generator to, to load and pre-process and the load and stream the data into our training model. So here I, I first divide in the data into train validate validation and, and and a test set. And I I use this function. Basically what this function does is that it pre it pre-process um, the data so that it, it can fit into the model. We use, for example, um, the the images to start with may not be the diff, uh, may not be the same size. We need to resize them, and we also need to normalize them, and all these are done in this function. So so that we can successfully stream the data into our training model with no problem. Utility functions I I I wrote to save and evaluate the model. Um, these are saving the, the model results into local storage so that we can compare how well the model trend um, performs. Um, compare all the models is another script just to, to list every model I, I, I made so that we can compare them horizontally. So here I, I mainly adapt transfer learning in my project because this is a common practice instead of instead of building your own neural convolution uh, neural network you can use existing ones um, 
especially when you're dealing with cl uh, image classif classification problem. Um, VHG-16 is one of the old one, but that's probably the oldest one that is still people still use nowadays. It's not as accurate, it's kind of bulky, but I just want to use it as my base layer. So I'm going to fine tune the last um, COM2D base. So what that does is that I'm going to freeze everything except the last four layers. So I only train the last last couple of layers to fi to fine tune um, the data set to, uh, to fine tune the model to fit my um, data set. As you can see, I print out all the layers in this model. The the few the the last um, com block and the classification layers are gonna be trained, and all the other ones are gonna be um, frozen because they're, they're just gonna take the parameters given. Uh, from TensorFlow. Here I started training the model, um, all these little things, uh, features such as early stopping and uh, safe uh, checkpoints are, are, are things, uh, features people use to monitor the, the training process. As you can see, um, the model kind of fits the, the, um, the training data set really well. But then it has the problem, probably uh, of the problem of overfitting occurs because as you can see, even though the training data set is um, has an accuracy of a hundred percent almost, the validation data set is barely achieving like thirty percent ish. And uh, by the end of the training, um, this model is only able to predict that the, the make it predict prediction of with 32% of accuracy. So that's um, that. I know there is a sufficient amount of uh, room for improvement. So I utilized a much more advanced and recent uh, model, uh, which is ResNet. And this time also um, the, the, op the optimizer we used for ResNet is going to be Atom. And uh, I, I, again, this is another application of transfer learning. I downloaded the model. I, I also, I, I freeze every layer except the last classification um, layers. So I wrote my own classification layers. Um, and this is all the uh, model summary. I encourage you to take a look at it. Um, the training param tra parameters for after freezing all those layers, it's going to be that much left. So when we train a model using ResNet mod uh, model, we were able to bump the accuracy to uh, 42% compared to 30% earlier. That's a big, a huge improvement. And still, that's, I mean, for a challenging question, this might be good. But then for a, classif a classifying dog breed, I feel like there's a lot more room for improvement, so I add data augmentation to my trend model. What data augmentation does is that um, it's it's basically a, a common practice in machine learning. So it use it adds modifications to pictures such as um, horizontal flip, um, zoom in or zoom out, um, and also here in my case I used adjust brightness and adjust contrast. So after we we done those modification to the training data set, we add them back to our um, training pool. So that way we generate more data uh, to train uh, to feed into our, our model. And as we know in machine learning that usually the more data we have to train, the better. So with data augmentation applied, I train a model and I was able to significantly increase, enhance the uh, accuracy to almost 80%. This is a huge success by applying data augmentation. And uh, just to show how good the model is at the end, um, I, I, I used the test data set to, um, to, uh, to test how, how well the, the, the model performs. So basically, Given that so all these images are from test data set. When this model has never seen these images before, they have only seen it, the images from training data set. 
and with the knowledge we've given to the model, uh, the model is able to predict what dark breed is just by giving the pictures. As you can see, I color coded the result. If anything in green, that means the, the model made a correct prediction. Otherwise, red means a false prediction. As you can see, this model is actually pretty smart, or at least I think better than average human in predicting the dark breed. So for example, given a um, Japanese Spaniel, uh, the model is able to tell it is a Japanese Spaniel. <clears throat> and also with the first, just to count a uh, number of predictions, the first 50, I grabbed the first 50, the model is able to make 41 correct predictions and 9, nine of them is uh, incorrect. Here at the, at, at the very end, I compare the three models I, I, I trained. Um, obviously, the ResNet with that augmentation has the highest accuracy, um, but also it is a little bit um, ha it's a little bit larger on the size wise compared to VGG sixteen. Um, this only comes into play when you think about maybe you want to deploy the model to a mobile platform, so you want to kind of shrink the size um, as much as possible. Um, the 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 training execution time is all um, not significant, um, but when training with a much larger data set or a lot harder, a ch a ch more challenging questions, this could uh, be a lot more. Um, so yeah, um, there's definitely a lot more advanced models out there I need to explore, and also I can tweak the uh, hyperparameters more to increase the um, the accuracy, um, but that's the future work I need to work on. So thank you very much for your time today. Um, uh, please let me know how you feel about my work. And also I encourage everyone to um, take a look at this notebook. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.